Hello and welcome to this video on economic analysis. To be able to value a business, you need to understand what that business does. And to understand how the business performs, we also need to understand the ec economic environment that it's a part of. So the aim of our economic analysis is to understand how changes in the broader economy will influence the performance of the business you are valuing. This will help us to understand how potential economic changes may influence the future performance of your business. So that when conducting an economic analysis, you have to look at all sorts of different economic factors that may influence the performance of the business you are trying to value. I'm going to go through a range of common economic factors that are likely to influence business performance. The first one I'm going to look at is called GDP or gross domestic product. Gross domestic product is a measure of the size of an economy and how GDP changes over time measures how the economy has grown or shrunk throughout time. This often has a really large influence on business performance. So when you've got a company to value, you need to start to understand what is the domestic economy they are part of. So if you're a company that's operating pr predominantly in Australia, you'd want to analyze how the Australian economy is growing or shrinking. And GDP is a measure of that change in the economic growth. You want to make sure you focus your analysis on the economy of the largest sales market. So if it's a multinational firm, and most of their operations are in Europe, you would focus most of your economic analysis on the European market because that will be the one that influences the firm's sales the most. Some companies like McDonald's or Coca-Cola are so global that you would really want to analyze the global economy because they have sales generated all around the world. So when you're looking at the GDP, GDP measures the size of the economy. And for a lot of companies, as GDP grows, your company's potential customer base will also grow. So GDP growth for many firms is a sign of potential growth themselves. They'll have more customers, their customers will have more money to spend on their products, and it could be a sign of potential future strength. However, it's not a rule for all companies. There are companies that are counter cyclical, which means that they may perform better when GDP growth is negative. They might be firms like uh, debt collectors, pawn shops, these kind of businesses may do really well when GDP growth is at its weakest. Another factor to look at is the inflation rate. In Australia, the Reserve Bank of Australia will publish their inflation target and the inflation rates, or the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. And understanding how changes in inflation influence your business's performance is also really important. It's another key economic indicator. So inflation may influence your business's revenues. If inflation is high, your revenues may also increase because you may be able to increase the price of your goods for sale. However, your expenses may also go up. If inflation is high in your inputs to your business, the price you pay for those inputs will increase and it may influence your profit margins. In a global economy, businesses are buying and selling things all around the world using different exchanges or different currencies. So understanding the foreign exchange rate and how changes in foreign exchange rates influence your business performance is also really important. If your business is based in Australia and all its sales are in Australian dollars and all its inputs are from Australia, foreign exchange might not be important. But it's unlikely you'll value a business like that. Most businesses will be importing supplies from overseas and have to pay for those supplies in foreign currencies. And if your business is an exporter and selling things in Australian dollars, how the Australian exchange rate fluctuates will also influence their sales. So understanding if the Australian dollar goes up, how will that influence your business sales? If the Australian dollar decreases in value, how will that influence your business's sales or being able to look at these trends and see how they influence your business's performance over time is another really important indicator. The interest rate may have a really large effect on some company's profitability. If your business has borrowed a lot of money, if the interest rate was to go up or down, it will influence their interest expense. That is if they have borrowed at a variable rate or if they're currently borrowing more. As the interest rates change, the cost of capital for the firm may change as well, which may change what investments they perceive as viable. And when we do our valuation models, understanding the current interest rate is important for the cost of capital as it's an input into our valuation models. And finally, interest rates often affect consumer behavior. As interest rates decrease, a lot of consumers will then be likely to spend more money in the retail sector, for example. So understanding how changes in interest rates may affect your business is an important, an important economic indicator to look at as well. 
Australia has a huge mining and resources industry. So for those firms, the most important economic indicator to look at is commodity prices. For a company like BHP that sells a lot of iron ore, the iron ore price is key to their performance. So understanding the commodity price, because it may influence your revenues if you're a commodity producer, or if you're a manufacturing firm or a selling things that are, have a lot of commodities in them, then you may be uh, you may need to focus on the commodity price because it influences your expenses. Okay, so for example, Coca-Cola is heavily influenced by the price of sugar, which is a commodity that trades on commodity markets. I've only given an overview of some of the main economic indicators for you to look at when you're valuing a company. However, there's a range of different things that could influence the performance of a firm. For example, in this article, it discusses Mervac and how the property market influences their performance. So Mervac are a property developer and they also rent out premises. So how the property market is going influences their profitability and how much rent they can get for their uh, premises and how much they can sell their developments for. This one's a little bit left of center. Invocare operate funeral centers. And as the death rate rises, they will get more customers coming through. So demographic data, the age of the population, population growth, they're all key drivers of Invocare's profitability. So let's try and bring together all these economic factors we've thought about. One of the most important things in valuing a business is being able to forecast the business's future performance. And one of the most important things we have to forecast is sales revenue. So if we think of sales revenue as equal to price, times quantity. So the price of the goods that you sell times the number of goods that you sell gives you your sales revenue. Out of those economic indicators that we looked at, some of those indicators will influence the price that you sell your products at or the quantity that you sell. So for example, changes in GDP and interest rates may influence the quantity of goods you sell. Whereas changes in things like inflation, foreign exchange rates, commodity prices may influence the price of the goods you sell. Okay, so understanding how these different changes influence price and quantity of your sales and likewise your expenses as well. So your profit margin is equal to your net profit divided by your sales revenue and changes in things like interest rate, foreign exchange, commodity prices and inflation may influence your profit margin because it's going to have a different effect on your revenues and expenses. So let's just do a really brief example on how economic analysis is really important when we're valuing a business. So EOG resources are a really successful and fast growing business. We can see from 2016 to 2019, they grew their gross profit from 2.8 billion up to 11 billion. So this is over 300% growth in three years. This is an extraordinarily successful growth story. So here I've just gone to the Yahoo Finance data and we can see their total revenue and gross profits. It's all increased really rapidly from 2016 up to 2019. They're growing rapidly, their financial statements are looking good, revenues up, profits are up. However, if we look at the current share price, EOG have a low price to earnings ratio or a PE ratio. And this is often used by investors because investors will try and buy companies with a low price to earnings ratio as they represent a cheap buy and they're considered to be value stocks. So EOG are growing their revenues and profits really rapidly, but currently they have a low price to earnings ratio. So we need to think about what's causing this. Their price to earnings ratio was up in around 16. Then it has declined down to seven when I put this slide together. So our economic analysis, it's really important to remember that past performance does not indicate future performance. EOG had really strong revenue growth. Their past performance was fantastic. But as we start to learn about what they do, that is they're an oil company, and we start to look at their key economic indicators, that is the oil price. The oil price was up really high. And then in 2020, the oil price started to decrease really rapidly. So because we understand that the key driver of EOG's performance is the oil price because they sell oil, if the price of the goods they're selling has decreased by more than 50%, then all else being equal, we would expect their revenues to also decrease by maybe 50 to 60%. So that means understanding that they're an oil producer and the oil price drives their revenue allows us to then forecast into the future that their revenues are likely to be reduced 
and their profit margins are likely to be reduced in the future. So just because their revenue grew in the past, we've had an economic change, we cannot forecast their revenues will continue to grow. It's likely they will decrease rapidly in line with the decreasing oil price. And that explains the low price to earnings ratio. Investors realize this, so they're pricing the company shares lower. We can see the share price has decreased rapidly over the last year in line with the oil price decreases. So in conclusion, to value a company successfully, you need to know how the economic environment will influence your company's performance. It's difficult to get an understanding of the economic and company relationship, but it's very important to give it a go. And it's most important to focus on the economic indicators that are really relevant to your business. Because you could go through hundreds of different economic indicators, but it's important to focus on the ones that really do influence your business the most. And it different, differs industry to industry. So it's up to you to then try and show or prove that an economic indicator is actually important to the firm that you're valuing and how that effect is likely to play out in the future. I recommend you pause here on this slide and practice some of these questions. These are little scenarios where you can start to think about how different businesses may be influenced by different economic factors. Give it a go. Let me know in the discussion board if you've got any questions and I'll help you out. Thank you very much.